you're listening to the Pharmacist Answers Podcast. I'm Cynthia, the pharmacist, and today you'll get your questions answered and your curiosity cured. So one of the questions that I've been getting now that kids are back in school and the weather's getting a little bit cooler is head lice. And so I say the word head lice and everybody just wants to go and scratch your head because like the word lice just instantly means like everything starts itching, right? But there are some myths about head lice that we've probably been told by word of mouth and teachers at school freak out the parents and then people in all kinds of places start panicking. There's these news headlines that say super lice and we just freak out and just like want to wear plastic bags on our heads for the rest of our life. So some of it's true, some of it's not, and maybe not everybody has kids, but I wanted to spread the word. So maybe if you have the knowledge that what's myth and what's actually truth, then you can help some people not panic. When they come and see you and be like, oh my gosh, they sent home this letter that says there's lice at school and blah, 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 and everybody starts panicking. Myth number one that we all heard and that I remember when I was in school and lice was a thing and we all got the letter sent home is that having lice means that you're dirty and that's not true. Uh, but that was always the stigma. If somebody had lice, it meant that something about them was dirty or their hygiene wasn't up to par. And that's not true. Because here's the secret. Lice likes clean hair. Why? Because we use shampoo and it washes all of those oils out of your hair and your hair ends up really dry. And it means that your hair is really grippy. So, the little bug can hold on to your hair and climb up your hair and hang out in your hair and doesn't get doesn't slide out. Don't just don't wash your hair. Yes. So when you have the natural oils in your hair, then especially the root areas where they like to hang out and where they like to lay eggs, that's like the places that your hair gets the oiliest first. If you go several days between shampoos so not shampooing your hair using leave-in conditioners that leave your hair more smooth for some people who have really fine hair like me if i use a leave-in conditioner it weighs my hair down worse anyway so clean hair is usually the most attractive for for lice versus dirty hair so that kind of flips that stigma on its head when parents come freaking out at me at school be like oh they said some kid at school has lice but we've checked my daughter and she doesn't have lice so what do we do to make sure she doesn't get it i'm like don't wash your hair for a week i'm like most girls can rock a ponytail you just throw it up in a ponytail like my hair's too short don't i don't do ponytails but you can just throw it up in a greasy ponytail nobody's gonna care that's usually a really good way there are products that you can buy that's like a repelling shampoo that is kind of like a leave-in conditioner but there's no sense in spending like nine bucks on a specialty thing if you can do it one by like your natural oils in your hair anyway or two by a other leave-in conditioner that's probably a lot cheaper so that's the biggest thing number two is that lice doesn't live Will dry shampoo attract lice if you're not washing your hair? Dry shampoo is a little bit different. Dry shampoo works about the same way as like baby powder because it essentially just absorbs the extra moisture, but it doesn't dry out the roots of your hair as bad as like our bubbly, foamy, soapy shampoos do. So, where the dry powder shampoos are just absorbing the extra, but leaving the easy coating on your hair shafts, our liquid shampoos that we use with water, they're meant to trap up as much of the oil as they can and actually strips the oil away, which there's this whole shampoo, no shampoo kind of thing going on where like 
If you don't shampoo your hair long enough, then your nat the natural oils in your hair will balance out and your hair will actually be cleaner rather than being really greasy. The same way with like face washes, the more you wash your face, your face kind of freaks out and tries to produce more oil because there is a balance in, in the natural oils in your skin. And so your hair does the same thing. The more that you shampoo your hair and you keep stripping those oils away, then your scalp is going to keep producing more. So, the second myth about lice is that it can actually live for a long time yeah. off of your hair. And that's not true yeah, either. That's not good. Yeah. That's not good at all. Yeah. Lice requires that nice, warm, cozy place. Yeah. Um, just like mosquitoes, yeah. it lives off of microscopic droplets of your blood so it's not going to survive very long oh, off of a human so worrying about that lice is going to like hitch a ride on backpacks and hitch a ride on furniture that people may sit on or car seats or anything like that is not true because usually those things don't have prolonged contact with with your head and on a regular basis. So the places that lice like to hang out is the back of your neck at the bottom right here behind your head and then around your ears. The number one way that lice will spread is usually head-to-head -head contact. So that's like siblings sharing a bed. Sharing hair brushes. Now bugs aren't going to live on the brush from day to day, but for people who share a hairbrush regularly, um, I brush my hair, then you brush your hair. So anything that falls out of my hair into the brush will then get in their hair easily by transfer. So the prolonged contact, which is usually your bedding, sheets and, and pillows, brushes, and then sleeping in the same bed together are going to be the way that they spread. But it's very unlikely that backpacks are going to carry them, car seats are going to carry them, furniture is going to carry them. So they don't live very long off of a human. The other thing is that your pets cannot carry lice. Lice are a human only parasite so they spread from human to human which is different from other parasites that like humans like ticks and mosquitoes and fleas those type of parasites can be spread from pets to animals but lice will not affect your animals and you can't catch lice from your animals so that for some people is a comfort because you don't have to treat your cats and dogs for lice if you find out that it, that your kid has it or whatever, again, in the panic of like, oh, lice, I've got to clean everything and burn everything and do whatever. Like, you don't have to treat your couch. You don't have to treat your carpets. You don't have to treat your car. You don't have to treat your pets because the pets aren't going to transmit them. Whatever it is about what they like to eat and where they like to hang out, pets just aren't their thing. You hear the headlines about super lice and then people start freaking out. And when I hear that, I'm, I picture like Godzilla sized lice, like marching down the street and like tearing down buildings. But they're finding out because people freak out so bad when they get the note home from school, even though it's not their kid that's infected and they start using all of these chemical shampoos that you can buy at the drugstore, then the lice are starting to build up resistance. Critters, large and small, their number one goal is survival. So whatever they have to do to change their DNA, whether it's bacteria that, that change and mutate, viruses that change and mutate, bugs that change and mutate, whether it's human parasites or parasites on our crops because we use pesticides so much, those critters, their goal, their number one goal is survival. So they're going to find a way to mutate to protect themselves against all the stuff that we're using to kill them. Lice do the same thing. And the lice that are going around now isn't the lice that we experienced in like the 80s and 90s because that's how old I am. When I was a kid, the lice isn't the same. So the shampoos that we used then that might have worked fine aren't working right now because the bugs have found a way to mutate and become resistant to those things. So they're having to use harsher chemicals in shampoos to kill the lice, which makes it harsher on your body. One trick that they haven't become resistant to yet is vinegar. Diluted vinegar is not as harsh of stripping the the oils from your hair like shampoo is because it's chemically designed to to do that 
but vinegar dissolves the glue that the lice attach to their eggs when they lay the eggs on the roots of your hair and the eggs won't stick so then they wash out with water or they comb out with a comb obviously the bugs only live a certain amount of time just like like house flies and mosquitoes and stuff they have a certain lifespan they lay their eggs to reproduce and then they die off and then the eggs are the next generation tea tree oil tea tree oil is more intended to like suffocate them which isn't a hundred percent effective some people do mix the tea tree oil with the, the diluted vinegar just so you don't have the vinegar smell in your hair because vinegar is kind of strong and icky to some people but the vinegar dissolves the glue that's on the eggs and then you're able to get out that that next generation before they hatch because usually that's the hardest part where the shampoo will kill the bugs the the eggs are still there and so you gotta kind of keep this perpetual cycle from completing or they'll just keep coming back so that's an interesting and safe trick because Jocelyn, she's three. If daycare sends me a note that says, hey, we've had lice, then I would prefer to use the more natural thing on her than the chemical stuff because the chemical stuff is strong. There are certain things that you use like chemical shampoos for lice that you can't use on kids under a certain age. So obviously it's not like super great. And if part of the way that the shampoo works is to like disrupt their DNA reproductive cycle, too much exposure to that, that just sounds bad. I just have a bigger body than the bug does, so it affects them in smaller doses than it does me. You can just imagine if, if I got exposed to that enough that it could potentially have cell disruption in my own body too. So for little kids, that kind of makes me worry. And I'm a pharmacist and that's the kind of stuff that we use and that's the kind of stuff that doctors write for kids to use. So that's my perspective on it. I know it works and I know it will do most of what the doctors want it to do if they actually have to write a prescription for some kind of life shampoo. But if I can avoid that, it, that chemical exposure for my kids, then that's what I'm going to do. So there's a whole lot of other things about lice that is true or not true, but those are kind of the main ones that people kind of freak out and they want to fumigate their whole house because of lice. And it's really not necessary. So wash your bedding, wash your pillows, clean out your brush. Or Usually it's a good idea to get a new hairbrush every so often, kind of like you get a new toothbrush just because it gets worn. Lice furniture spray. Unless you have a lot of people sleeping on your couch the places that the lice is going to spread from is going to be the places that your head has long contact with so that's going to be your hairbrushes your pillows your sheets some people have long exposure on their couch and so you may have to spray your couch because again they're not going to the eggs aren't going to fall out of your hair because they're glued in the bugs don't live very long off of your hair, so they're going to die somewhere in the process if they end up falling out. What do you consider long exposure? Four or more hours at a time. So, sleeping in your bed. Now, some people may sit in the same spot on their couch for four hours. I hope kids aren't doing that. They need to be outside playing and doing something, running laps. I don't know. But I can't imagine a kid spending four hours sitting on the couch in the same exact spot. Vinegar and tea tree oil for prevention. Vinegar and tea tree oil is actually a natural way to get the nits out of the hair if they're actually there. My best advice for prevention is just the natural oil of your hair because lice like clean hair. So if you shampoo it, then all of that oil is washed out. Your hair is really dry and really grippy. So then it's easy for them to climb up and crawl around. If your hair is oily, they can't get enough grip. So it sounds really extreme, but my advice to people so they don't have to buy a lot of extra stuff is forego shampooing for a whole week if they're worried about their kids getting it from their friends at school. And sitting beside people in school is not going to spread lice. Now, little kids, they come in contact with each other and, you know, little kids are usually high contact people anyway, because that's how they play. And so having some kind of preventative going on, if it makes you feel better when you send them to school, then that's great. 
Jocelyn, she's three. So she's a high contact. I mean, they're always in each other's space, always touching each other, all this kind of stuff. So not washing her hair, all of those natural oils, coat the hair and keep them from being attractive for anything to be able to grab on and climb up. So the vinegar and the tea tree oil, is, again, is more of a natural egg ungluer because the vinegar dissolves the glue that holds the egg in and then you can use those fine tooth combs and comb them out before they hatch. And sometimes if there's actually a positive identification of signs of lice, it may take more than one go around of shampooing with the, the treatment or using the vinegar spray and combing and stuff just to make sure that all the generations are taken care of. Because, again, they don't have an eternal lifespan. They don't live very long, but they, they live, they do their thing to reproduce, and then you got to make sure that you catch that next generation before it hatches out. So usually the spreading, again, is that prolonged contact with beds and sheets, siblings that sleep in the same bed, that share a bed, siblings that may share hairbrushes because it's easier for mom to have one brush instead of two so they're not fighting over whatever. There's other things that, that can spread it, but usually short contact at school, backpacks, car seats, temporarily used furniture, those are not going to be the things that cause it to spread. There's Jocelyn. Say hey! Hey. Now say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacist Answers podcast. The pharmacy is now closed. You can post your questions and comments on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash farm answers pod. Or you can email the show at pharmacist answers here at gmail.com. You can tweet me or message me on Twitter at Sin Hendricks. You can find the show notes at pharmacist answers here Pharmacist Answers broadcasts live on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9.02 a.m. Eastern Time on the Periscope app. You can follow me at Sin Hendricks or view in your web browser at periscope.tv slash Sin Hendricks. See you next time on the Pharmacist Answers podcast.